two, one. This podcast is brought to you by Kobe Sports. Kobe Sports supply top quality personalized sportswear for teams, clubs and schools. Kobe Sports have excellent package deals available. For more information, visit their website kobesports.com or follow them on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Delighted now to be joined by Willie Mayer to look ahead to this weekend's Club All-Ireland Hurling Final between Bally Gunner and Bally Hale. Willie, safe to say it's the novel final all hurling supporters have really wanted from the start of this campaign. Yeah, no, it's it's something that uh, I certainly, as a, as a hurling supporter, it's the game everyone wanted to see. Uh, Bally Gunner are, I suppose, knocking on the door, well, for the last couple of years as regards, you know, with, with six or seven Waterford Championships in a row. Uh, they've made it to the to to, to the to the to the final game, and then against Ballyhale, who who are the, I suppose the kings of of club hurling with uh, I think it's seven or eight all earned titles, and uh, going for ultimately three in a row, albeit in four years. But uh, it's it's yeah, it's 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 just uh, every part of this is uh, is uh, you know it's 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 fascinating. With Ballyhale, there's a lot of talk. This week of injuries, uh, Ronan Corker missed the semi-final. James O'Connor said it's going to be a 50-50 call. Darren Mullen and Kevin Mullen both came off injured and Connor Phelan. You imagine if you're to lose four players like that, this could be massive in this game. Yeah, but the word the word I had there in, in the last day or two was that Darren Mullen will play. Uh, so that's obviously a huge boost for Bally Hale in in their effort to to to, to quell uh, Desi Hutchison. Uh, I also heard that uh, Corker and will play. So uh, they're two, you know, they'd, they'd be two massive players. And I, I think uh, again, wetting the appetite even further as regards Corker was probably Bally Hale's best player over the championship from midfield. Uh, particularly in the in the Leinster final against Clock Ballacolla, where he was excellent, uh, but has been really, really good. And across the Kilkenny Championship this year, I've watched him fairly closely. So I think if he is fit to play, uh, I think that'll that'll it's it, it, it's pushing the bar towards uh, you know Ballyhale being obviously stronger than 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 than, than they have been for the last um, game or two. Ballyhale maybe throughout this campaign, like. They obviously clicked against Clock Balacolla and put in an outstanding performance. Just about got over the line against Thomas's and uh, ultimately were the better side in extra time against Rhinos. But they haven't fully clicked yet, apart from that Clock Balacolla performance. But do you think, like the last few weeks now, they're they're just loving this of teams doubting them? Yeah, hundred percent, and 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 that's. Uh, I suppose for 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 fellas that have won so much and a club being so I suppose successful historically, that they're constantly looking for different angles to motivate themselves. And I think the fact that people doubt them and people uh, write them off, even when they've won so much and are still on the road, I think that drives the the group. Uh, they're you know I mean they're they're what they they four Kilkenny championships now in a row they've uh, like three all Ireland this is they're they're going for three in a row all Irelands with the with the COVID year in between that that didn't get played so like I think yeah the, the, it's it's central to 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 who they are as regards and how they motivate themselves that you know they they love the doubt they love the, I I'd say they actually love the fact that they're playing Bally Gunner uh, who. We'll say maybe in that part of the world now. I think it's sixteen miles apart between Ballyhale and Ballygunner that people are writing or talking up Ballygunner. People are, you know, th- th- this will motivate Ballyhale. And uh, yeah, come, come. I think it's two forty-five on Saturday. I think it'll, it'll, it'll all come out. And I think, uh, yeah, it'll be just, it's just there's so many different battles here. But I think the psychological piece before the game, uh, I think it suits Ballyhale down to the ground. I think like when these club finals, everyone's kind of always intrigued about what kind of areas these two areas are in the final. Like for Ballyhale, it's not an overly massive area, really, from what I've heard. 
It's not, but I, 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 I don't know. And, and I, again, I, I, uh, I wouldn't have uh, lived in Bally or Bennis Bridge myself here. I'm only down the road from them. And it's, it's a big parish, guys are telling me, as regards and Shamrocks, be three different areas coming together under the the one Bally, the the one Shamrocks banner. So it's, I, I don't think it's as small as 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 people are 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 making out. It's it's you know it's three areas or three parishes. Uh, together, so it's a it's a big area, but again, ru very rural area, and uh, look the storied history of them as regards going back to to, to the seventies and the original teams that were winning all irons. Like it's a it's a fascinating story. It's a fascinating, I suppose, generational story to have success way back uh, when these guys' fathers and uncles and brothers were were were, were playing, and now this. Uh, this team emerging as regards over over the last ten years, and again, it's 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 not a new team than, than the one five, five or six years ago. But there's there's been a, a huge influx of, of quality players with Owen Cody, Corcoran, uh, Dean Mason, and the goal, uh, like Brian Cody, like you have a uh, Joey Cody, you have a lot of guys that you know that, that are that are that are starting their 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 careers, and you, you look at someone like Owen Cody, the Mullins, who I didn't mention there. Like it's 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 fascinating to see all. All these guys coming through, and uh, you know the success they've had uh, over the last years. When as I said, winning four championships and winning three All Irelands, it's it's it, it, it's a credit to, to them in the area. Especially when you think of two separate teams, like you look at the Michael Fenleys, the Henry Shefflins, the Chaff Fitzpatricks, and now I, I know they have the talent, but for a club to do that to have success nearly with two different <laughs> teams, I know there's still a few players that are still playing today, but there's not that many either when you look through the starting fifteen. No, it's not, and it's a lot of it's 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 a it's a, it's a, it's a lot of as you said, uh, which obviously drives the appetite and drives the hunger that these guys want to shape their history, and they're not worried about what happened six or ten years ago as regards with the Henrys and the Aiden Cummins and the Bobby Edwards and, and and those fellas. Like they're they're trying to create their own history, and and they're certainly doing that. I suppose luckily then for the, for the TJs and the Collins at the age they're at to have that influx of 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 ability number one but also i suppose the mind the mindset piece that guys are uh looking to create their own history as i said and yeah it's it's it really sets it up and it, it really i think it whets the appetite as regards with bally hale and again the, the, the success they've had over the last few years now bally gunner trying to take their title away and i think it's uh it's you know there's been a lot of building in bally gunner over the last 10 or 15 years as well and it's I, I suppose that's what makes this this uh this this, this rivalry which will, which will form next sunday or next saturday uh even more appetizing just on bally gunner like they've been a standout club team but they just haven't reached that holy grail they're in their first final which is hard to believe when you think of all the success they've had like obviously there's going to be a huge buzz around Bally Gunner this this week and like players will try to stay away from it but can you stay away from it so much when it is your first final yeah I, I think it'll be very difficult I uh I yeah it's it, it's uh it's it's look that the, they've had huge success over the years as regards culminating in this I suppose uh final performance on 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 Saturday like they, they, they won seven championships in a row they were beaten by passage I think it was in 13 and they won was it three or four before that as well so yeah they, they, they've they've won a lot of Waterford championships they've won is it, is it Three monsters in, in in that period as well, but this is the this this is this is where I suppose a club of of that stature and that success has been building towards. Their underage has been phenomenal over the last again fifteen years, uh, and, and and again this year I think where they won the majority of of underage and twenty and minor championships within Waterford. So this is this this is a culmination to a, of a lot of hard work. I think sometimes when you're on that kind of journey over that period of time. Uh, it's not lost on on these players and the club that you know this this is what we work towards this is where we want to be performing in and I, 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 yes there'll be a lot of uh, hype around the area but knowing the group i suppose you know from the outside and, and knowing one or two of the guys involved they will be very good to i think insulate that that hype and uh, because they'll have to because i i think the realization of of going to an all ireland final and being caught in the hype against i suppose the masters of all ireland finals uh, in club hurling in ballyhale um, i think that they'll be 
they'll be well aware of the situation. Uh, I know Dara Sullivan, you know, top operator as, as as manager, he he will have he'll insulate the group, but I think the group will insulate themselves as well because there's a huge amount of maturity and player led environment within that Bally Gunner group. And I, I don't think they'll they'll allow themselves miss this opportunity uh through I suppose anything uh preparation wise before the before Saturday. Don't know, did you hear Stephen O'Keefe um, talking during the week and he was putting the success down to just a couple of the under-20s that are now starting on this team that they really brought a freshness and a kind of hunger to this team? Yeah, I, I didn't hear the interview, but uh, I'd I know Stephen over the years and I like, you know, the, he, he, like whoa, whoa, what uh, what they've done with the, with the influx of young players in Ballygunner, it, it, it seems to have, I suppose, re-energised the, the the, the, the team. You look at when they were beaten in the semi-final in Thurles against Ballyhale a couple of years ago. It was a wet day. That was the kind of the coming of age of, I suppose, Ballyhale's younger players with own Cody getting the decisive goal in the second half. But also on, on the other side, uh, Ballygunner had a few players. I think Brian Sullivan's not there now, who was a, you know, a, a real threat as regards and very difficult to replace. But they seem to have replaced him with, obviously, the Desi Hutchison's and the and the Mikey Manny's and, and these types of players. So I think, uh, yeah, look, it's... Uh, I think that the common theme coming from a lot of club teams now very much is the the, the importance of, of guys stepping up and being leaders no matter what the age is. Uh, once you're once you're on the team, once you're <clears throat> deserving of a jersey, it's your responsibility to 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 lead and drive the group. <clears throat> The days of, I suppose, coming on board as a as a backseat passenger and just going along for the ride are over, and you you, you, you see that with the, I suppose, the the, the Bally Gunner team now. It's uh, the six or seven or eight lads that are that, that are that are now in the team driving it, and uh, I think look, that's what makes them a force, and that's what makes them uh, so. This this match, so I suppose uh, it's on a knife edge, and it's very difficult to call. We talked about it being a novel final and how they're so close to each other, but. The- I'm not sure, but there's a lot of relations between the different sides uh, going into this one as well. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't know the, the direct relationships, yeah. but I'm, I'm sure like they're not a million miles from each other. Like anyone knows the geography of of, of South Kilkenny and the Ballyhale area is, it's 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 very it's very very close to to Waterford City, and uh, I think uh, like you, you you see a lot a lot of, a lot of guys that probably would have went through WIT as well. There'll be a lot of links with guys from South Kilkenny. I know the guys in Ballyhale will probably go up to up to into Ballyhale to school or into Cairns, but at the same time, there's a lot of connections between. The, the areas and again it, it makes it and then the whole Kilkenny Watford rivalry as well I think it, 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 it is something that I suppose I haven't heard mentioned yet that the uh, you know the, 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 there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, history a lot of uh, a lot of look there's, there's a huge amount of writing on the on, on the match on Saturday and I think that's what makes it even more uh, you know uh, every everyone is talking about it and, and I think it's the the journeys as well I think that and that's the the final piece in this the journeys of both clubs over the years as I said Ballyhale with the established uh, winners of, of the title so many times and, and Ballygun are trying to get up there and it's uh, it's just it's just fascinating stuff. So, you know, Keith was talking as well about when they played Ballet in the first round of Munster and they had to leave Ballet Gunner at half six in the morning for Ennis. But this three o'clock game on Saturday, it is a bit more of a challenge for players like compared to maybe a five o'clock game. Yeah, possibly. Uh, yeah, like it's... it's uh... As the neutral going to Crow Park on Saturday, I, I'm really looking forward to it. And three o'clock is it's it's perfect. But I I can see the I suppose the the issues with uh, with a Saturday game at that time. I, I also saw a bit of commentary about this should be on a Sunday. And uh, look, I, it's 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 uh, yeah. Uh, I I think look, it's it, it's people there'll be a big crowd in Crow Park on Sunday because people want to really really want to get there. I think it's. Uh, the, the the anticipation of the the fair on the, that will be on show is is uh is I suppose the, the the biggest thing in my mind and if this was on Friday at two o'clock I'd, I I try and make sure to, to be there as well like you know but for players yeah it can, it can be difficult but I'm sure look I think it's a quarter three throw in Iron Crow Park uh you know Dublin now is two hours to Waterford on the motorway uh so it's not a I don't I don't think it's a it's 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 it's, it's that big a deal. One thing as well, like we have to say going into this game, it's it's just fantastic, I suppose, with COVID and everything. We didn't have the provincial, we didn't have the All-Ireland, but like when you see these championship games, 
I know some games in Munster were maybe mismatches, but it's still just great like for communities and everything to have this back. I I agree with you completely. I, like isn't 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 it like a, it's it's just so unique going to Crow Park on Saturday, not even for the hurling but for the football as well as regards with Kilku and and Crokes to, I don't know vastly different types of clubs, but we're all the one uh, ultimately pe- types of people that, that 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 support these games. But for communities that are involved, it must be unbelievably special. Like the 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 pride and the. Uh, I suppose just the sense of community uh, going to to Crow Park. I saw it there last week with with with, with Moonkine and uh, Nace winning the, the the junior intermediate. Like what 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 it means to 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 people that are involved in in hurling and football clubs to to have their big day in Crow Park. It's just look, it's 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 the culmination of 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 years of work from 20, 30, 40 years ago from primary teachers, from mentors, from whatever it is, and it, to culminate in. in in an all and final appearance in Crow Park, it just must be, it must be amazing. And it's something I, I haven't experienced to obviously with my own club in Ballangari. Ne- we, we, but it's something that, you know, I, it's just, it's it's unique. And I, I think it's uh, it's something I'd be very je- jealous and envious of uh, clubs that uh, that are able to get the work done, put the, put the, put the structures and, and teams in place and, uh, and, and be able to, to get there because it's a, uh, it's, it's just su- such a, such a wonderful uh, expression of, uh, of, of, I suppose that pride in, pride in wherever you're from. Looking at the game in depth now, um, Bally Gunner, and Ballyhill, if you're like you came up against Ballyhill in club championship, um, how do Bally gonna approach this game from the start? Like, because if you look at characteristics and if they go all out and they put this intensity in, the question is, can they maintain it? But you looked at the semi final then, they didn't introduce any subs in that game, yeah. It's, it's, I suppose, the one team that uh. That that are, are just not not system oriented, but they have their philosophy and how they want to play. And and Bally Gunner stick not rigidly to it, but it's 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 the template from on 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 how they how they go about the the game. They have you know they have a you know spectacular uh, quality uh, corner forward or full forward inside forward in, in Desi Hutchison. So they're they're trying to to work the ball as best they can out the field to to to, to allow him to to to, to pick the the, the seventy thirty ball as opposed to the ball coming down top. Feet head uh which i'm sure he'll be able to deal with as well but at the same time th- they really maximize his threat by giving him ball after ball that uh he can like again you look at the monster final and you look at i suppose playing kill malak and you're kind of saying well why didn't they put someone in front of uh in front of desi hutchison but it's it's, it's more it's 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 easier said than done and why why, why it just it's, it's very difficult to to to, to manage i i do think and I know it's 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 probably a bit cliche in in, in hurling analysis, but I, I do think Bally Bally Hale will bring an intensity to uh, that middle area that to, to, to I suppose to disrupt the quality of the ball going into Desi Hutchison. Like you know, you 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 go man for man in the in the Bally Hale Bally Gunner forward line. Bally Hale, you know, man to man probably a better better finishers, better attackers. Uh, so I'm sure that they're saying to themselves, okay, we limit uh, Desi Hutchison and we limit the way Bally Gunner moved the ball from, I suppose, that, that, that transition from, from, from back to front. Uh, we, we really get into their faces. We start knocking them back. Uh, we start disrupting that ball and then we'll see what happens. And I'm sure that's the, the very much the approach from, from Bally Hale. From the other perspective, Bally Gunner obviously don't want that to happen. So they, they, they'll, bring a, you know, they'll bring their level of physicality, which we know they can bring as well. And, and it's just... I, I, I genuinely think this is a very, uh, very much a, a match that, that that will happen on the day because, again, two unbelievably quality sides in the best pitch in Ireland. Uh, you know, the, 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 I think, and I think that that, that I have mentioned that to you, I suppose, over the last couple of weeks, the quality of the surface really does dictate a lot of the quality of the hurling, particularly at this time of the year, because you know you play in Dublin and Cork, it, they're they're different. 
different types of fields. It's much more solid. You 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 think back to the the Munster Club Championship there with Middleton and, and Kilmallock in the Gaelic grounds. Just that heaviness that was there, and it looked like a mismatch. Where you know Middleton are a fine side, but it just Kilmallock got on top, physically stronger than 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 than, than Middleton. Middleton were to impose, I suppose, the quality of the play that they were able to play in Porky Keeve a couple of weeks and months before that in Cork. And I think it's it, it, it certainly slowed down the game. Where on Saturday, it's this is you know this this this, this is where everybody wants to be the big wide expanses of Croke Park the quality of the field the ball hopping and it's it's very much I think whoever uh, I suppose settles and imposes their game on the other will win Does Darren Mullen tie up here with Desi Hutchinson? I think so, yeah. I think that's uh, that's uh, Darren Mullen looked very, uh, you know, he, he he looked like he had a broken collarbone coming off in the, the semi final against Thomas's, but he he the word is he he's going to play. So I think, uh, yeah, I, I I think really really good battle. But as I said to you, like you know, the, you you could have, you know, you could have the best of the best of the best, Mark and Desi Hutchison, and the ball coming in, and there's nothing that person can do. So this is a kind of a it's a it's a two pronged uh, approach. In my opinion, yes, you have to get Darren Mullen close to Desi Hutchison and, and, and get him competing with him, but you also have to stop the quality of that ball that you know that that, that he's not nearly pointing where he wants it. It's it's literally it's coming whatever way the boys can get it into him, and then that gives Bally Hale a chance. Do you do you expect Bally Hale maybe to drop someone back in front of Hutchinson, or do you think that's just not in their DNA? Uh, I think they're very pragmatic. I think yeah, if they feel that that, that will work. Uh, uh, I think they will. I think Richie Reid uh, plays that role very, very well. I think uh, just let him let him sit a bit deeper in a in a in a kind of a on the on the edge of the D and cutting off that play. I, I think yes, that that would make sense. But I suppose it's uh, yeah, the DNA piece is interesting because it's not in their DNA to 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 although although they are pragmatists, it, it's not in their DNA to drop a seven back in front of. Uh, in front of an attacker like that, but I think uh, they're you look they're, they're, they'll have to do something because they they, they 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 can't rely on on raw work rate out the field stopping the ball going in. They have to, I suppose, strategically uh, position. In my opinion, someone in front, and that that person will be Richie Reid for me. It's safe to say, Ballyhale in games, they've been a bit one dimensional in attacking late on in games, but it's working because they have that quality inside of Fenley. Even TJ might go in there at one stage on Cody, but they just seem when they're trying to scrape out games, they just just belt that long ball in to the inside line. And like it's it is easier said than done, but do you think they need to be a bit more varied in attack this weekend? I think they will be a little bit more varied in in their in their general approach. I suppose in the last five or six minutes, if you're if you're looking for a win and you have that kind of quality or outlet as regards you, you look at the you know you look at Joey Cuddy, you look at Colin Fenley, you look at TJ, you look at Brian Cody, you look at Adrian Mullen, uh, you look at Brian Cody. Like you have six guys there that are nearly inter county quality, and all of them can play inside or out. So you're it's it's just something that that they have in in their armory. I do think they'll they'll see what happened uh, in the semi final, which knocked Neil and the long ball that caused big problems to the Ballygunner full back line. I think they'll they'll target that. I think they'll they'll look at how do we get balls in on top of Ian Kenny, uh, Ty Foley, Barry Coughlin, and and put them under pressure. If that's a two man full forward line with Colin and TJ or whatever the, the 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 makeup is, they have that ability to rotate. They also have a kind of a during games they like you know they they nearly dictate on the field. Colin will go out, Brian Cody will go in, or TJ will go in, or whatever way they want to maneuver it. They they they, they, they seem to call it on the field, and and, and I suppose. Having witnessed that in, in a lot, I watched all their club championship matches this year. They just they, they do that freely, and and there seems to be a kind of a player led uh, way of, of 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 changing games or changing the way and the flow of games, realizing what's needed. I, again, I'll go back to to reference the the James Stevens Bally Hale match last year, not this year. But you know when the real pressure came on, I think TJ came out, Colin came out, or Colin, like it was just it was it was. It was just natural, and 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 positions, yes, mean a lot. But who's in those positions? You know, they decide. Okay, put the ball. You see, TJ calling for the ball. Uh, put it down top of me, and and then winning the ball when the, when the pressure comes on. So, I think they have a lot of options in how they can attack Bally Gunner, and uh, it's 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 a case of of when and where they want to deploy those. Should Bally Gunner defensively not try and go up for the ball 
with Colin Finley and TJ Reid. So if they do catch it, they're there to stand them up or they're there to break the ball because if you do that against Finley and Reid inside, it, it just seems like a losing battle. Yeah, they're, they're 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 so strong and they're so, I suppose. Look, they're just they're just so dangerous and 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 over that, like you, you know, you, you see what I suppose when Colin Fenley really got the bit between his teeth in that Leinster final against Clock Valley Colla, he he won the match on his own. The ball just kept going in and he kept scoring, and it was it was it's. I think your point is 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 well made. Do you do you stand off and not allow them in? But then. The kind of ability that they have, you're not allowing them in for goals, but you're giving them handy points. And even again, I reference Bally, Bally, Bally Hill, uh, Bennis Bridge this year in the in the first round or the, the yeah the first round, the quarter final, the Kilkenny Championship. The uh, we, we, we kind of stopped. Okay, we're we're not going to give away goals here, and they, they, I think they're not 27, 28 points. So they're they, look they, if if you don't if they don't get in. Uh, They'll hurt you from outside. So the, the, uh, that's the most, uh, I suppose, impressive thing that I that I feel about Ballyhale and and I haven't haven't watched them. That you know they they can score inside and out and and and, and God forbid if there's a, if there's a, if there's a gap there at all they will they will get in. So uh, yeah, it'll be, it, it, it's it, it is a dilemma for, for 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 the players at the back. Do you do you knock the ball away and and take your chance or do you just try to try to stand them up in some shape or form? But again, they can they can hurt you outside if if, if that's the situation. You mentioned midfield earlier on. That really seems like a key battle. Uh, Connor Sheehan and Paddy Levy have been very central for Ballygunner. And then maybe expect Ronan Mullen to be there with Patrick Mullen. But it doesn't just seem like them players are going to be there. Looking at this game, it really feels like it's going to be congested. Both sides are really going to go after, like most early games, work right here in the middle and stop that quality ball going inside. Yeah, yeah. Well, like yeah, I agree with you. I, I think the the Ballygunner midfield has been unbelievably impressive to date in, in in the matches and and being that link as regards between back and forward and getting on people's shoulder when the ball breaks forward, and similarly getting on you know being 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 positioned deep enough when the ball goes long that they're on someone's shoulder to to work the ball out. That's the most important. That's the most I suppose impressive thing for me for for Ballygunner and how they use the ball. Like you know, again, having watched them a lot in challenge matches over the summer and just. Just, 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 just watching them to see, to, to see, could I learn something as regards about about how they play and h- how well they're, how well they're, they're I suppose, co- coached and h- how well they're they're able to play the game that allows them to to like it takes a huge athleticism to to, to play the game they're playing and and with the with the with the, with the two fellas in, in in midfield, I think uh, th- look they form a very impressive partnership, but I I don't think they've they've come up against anything as I suppose as, uh, as dynamic as as you know a Paddy Mullen or or a Ronan Corcoran or 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 whatever Bally Hale throw at it, which it could be Brian Cody as well. He's played a lot of championships deeper this year as well. So it's uh it, again, I think Paddy Levy and, and Connor Sheen, yeah, really you know played really well to date. Uh, also, it will be interesting for both players to see how they they get on in the in Crow Park because I don't know have either of those guys played in Crow Park before at any level. So, like, there's a there's there's, there's a big piece here as well as regards with Bally Hales experience of the big day, experience of Croke Park. This is just another day for Ballyhale. While, yes, acknowledging that this is obviously, this will push them into, into you know, the stratosphere of of, of, of a club player, of club championship winning teams. But I think, you know, Ballygunner haven't been here before. So that's a, that, that, that's a big test for them. Is a good start all the more vital for Bally Gunner this weekend because we've seen Bally Hale come back from the death and everything but first final settled the nerves early on and like in the games they've played up to date once they've got into that lead they've, they've kept that scoreboard ticking all the time yeah, no, absolutely, and uh, and look, they, they they need to start well. They need to to start on, on the front foot, and uh, I, I I'll you know I suppose the word not be or the the words not be passive and not let it pass them by. I think is 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 central to this. Again, knowing some of the individuals involved in the Bally Gunner set up and you look at someone as experienced as Shane Sullivan like I don't think that they'll let that happen and they'll and they'll they'll really I suppose relish the 
uh, the, where they are because they worked so hard to get there. And, the, and that realization that, you know, they, they look, they have to start the match well. And you start the match well by, you know, getting physically into the match, you know, doing something well on the ball. Uh, but also, I suppose, just get into your rhythm. And, and Valley Gunner have an unbelievable rhythm when they when, when they play. It's 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 some it's it's difficult to disrupt, but at the same time, they'll just want to bring that and and be comfortable, you know, doing what they do every day and and, and trying to get that. Uh, you know, it's just one more match, and we'll hear all the cliches in the next while. But that's that that's where they want to get to. They want to get to okay. This is just another game. We're playing hurling since we're twelve years of age or, or, or younger. Uh, we've you know we've won we've won a lot of championships, and I think it's uh it's yeah it's it, it'll it'll be really uh you know the, the first ten minutes will be massive for them. Yeah. You mentioned inside Desi Hutchinson is has been their main scoring threat. It's huge in one way for poor Mahoney getting back here into Crow Park after these injuries he suffered. A hundred percent. Look, what, what a what a servant! What, like what a I suppose it takes a special type of of character to come back after you know the, the, the level of, of of hardship and 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 serious injury that that he has uh, gone you know gone through over the last couple of years. And look, he's one of their big players and. Uh, you know he's look he's a ten hour ten man on freeze. He's you look. I suppose it, it, it is under interesting when you when you look at Mikey Manny and Peter Hogan on the half forward line as well. Like they have a lot of they have a lot of players that are you know hungry and not not the Park Manny is not hungry. He'd be obviously hungrier than everyone trying to win this All Ireland for Bally Gunner. But yeah, look, I, I, I think he's probably a, a symbol of of how. Uh, much work goes into to getting to finals, and the amount of work Bally Gunner as a club have done over the last twenty years to to get themselves to this place. And yeah, it, it's uh, it's uh, I'm delighted for Parry to be to be playing the All Ireland, but that'll be no good to him unless uh, unless they come through with a victory. You mentioned Richie Reid dropping back. Do you think Joy Holden obviously went really well at six against Thomas? Has kind of changed that game. Do you expect him maybe to go into? The half back line, or do you think he'll stay at full? Like, like who for you will pick up Manny? Uh, I think Joey Holden will start on the full back line, uh, on potentially Kevin Mahoney, and like he was in the last game. Uh, Richie Reid, I think, will just drop, drop deeper if Mikey Mahoney doesn't go with him and goes further out the field. There's a question then who picks up Mikey Mahoney in the middle of the field, which could be a, a Brian Cody dropping from wing forward, which might mean a two man inside of Colin and. TJ to start with Bali Hill, so it's it's all these I suppose uh, every every decision that uh, is made as regards strategically from 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 management will will will, will they'll have it well balanced out. But I, like I think Richie Reid is he's so comfortable on the ball, he's so comfortable, uh, he's a brilliant striker of the ball, but he's hugely athletic as well, and and that's kind of I, I don't know that that's something that's probably missed a lot that he's you know he's really covering the ground well so. I think Joey Holden, yeah, albeit he, you know, he was he was excellent when he came into that position against Thomas. He came out with two or three like serious uh, puck outs and, and drove Ballyhill forward when they really needed it. But I, I think he'll start in the full back line and uh, that you know that, that, that would with, with Richie Reid in front of him. Something that's I suppose uh, you know we ha- we haven't discussed. You look at Derek Harker, an inter-county senior player at, at number at number seven, you know, top top quality player, and Evan Shefflin as well, who I saw come on came on for. DCU there two weeks ago and nearly changed the match from, from midfield. Really good hurler as well. So it's uh, there's you know the, 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 there's no there's no real uh, weak spots to that Bally Hale defence either. And uh, it'll be just try they'll try to stay as compact as they can because they don't want a situation where it's 40, 50, 60 yards in front of Desi Hutchinson and then being able to work the ball out the field to get the perfect ball in because you know they'll they'll know they, they can't afford to do that. Does Peter Hogan, I suppose, bring a different dynamic to that? We talk about Shefflin and Corcoran in the air. They're fantastic. But Peter Hogan is a player with raw pace and maybe it's something that can challenge the Bally Hale halfback line. Yeah, I, 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 he's a really, really good player, and it, it's again, it's something that I forget sometimes when, when watching Bally Gunner how how good how good a player he is, and like he's inter-county standard, and haven't played for Waterford for the last couple of years, so it's 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 not. Uh, yeah, I think he he'll definitely bring something bring something different to them. I think uh, Billy O'Keefe has has added something as well inside to 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 what Bally Gunner have done, and it's not just about Desi Hutchison, but they 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 have a bit of quality around him as well, which again is just 
I suppose it's it's one of the components that make this the final, as we as we as we discussed at the very start, that uh, that everyone wants to see because the team, the both teams are so good and there's so many options. It's not like, you know, there's the there's two or three dodgy lads in uh, on the team and the other team is just waiting to expose them. That's not the case here. These are you know two really really good squads and two two really really good 15s and that's what makes this even more fascinating. Something again, I suppose that that that, that you haven't mentioned with the Stephen O'Keefe impact, like. He he pulls off saves that are that are yeah. you know that are go that are goals of everybody else, and I think that's a that's a really really big thing here as well. When you look at the the, the amount of goals Bally Hale score over the years, like you know there's a chance you know that that if those chances fall to Bally Hale again, there's a fair chance Stephen O'Keefe could could pull one out that that no one else can. As a manager, like you must know all about it from a Bally Gunner perspective like what they're thinking this week they have their matchups they could be planning for TJ Reid in the half forward line then he goes into the full forward line like we've talked about that constant change like it yeah it, it just must be a nightmare but like Bally Gunner like if that happens do you expect them to change like do they change their back around backs around do they keep them in the same position what will they do defensively I, I yeah, it's 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 the ultimate uh, uh, conundrum with Ballyhale because like they just have so much quality and and that's the and, and then like I said there they have this freeness in which TJ drifts in TJ drifts out Colin drifts in Colin drifts, like it's 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 uh, very difficult to, to to coach against. Yes, you'd like your your matchups and you'd like you know you, you you'd like you know Barry Coughlin to to be on the edge of the square on. On, on whoever, but th what could happen there is Joey Cuddy goes to the edge of the square, and Barry Coughlin's on Joey Cuddy, and then you, you, one of your matchups is thrown out straight away if, if you wanted a. So like it's it's uh, there's just so much going on. This is it's it's more akin to an intercounty uh, setup than 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 clubs because you know you you, you have a situation in in, in intercounty obviously where where, where you're, you're trying to you're mark you're marking everybody, but at the same time. Yeah, it's it's a big conundrum. I don't think Barry Coughlin will move from the edge of the square. So I think uh, whoever he's been designated to match, whoever it's it's whoever comes in, and you have to have that flexibility and and and, and be fluid enough to, to 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 be confident in the players that 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 you have uh, in in and outside. Because I don't think you can plan on going to I'm going to get six matchups here. That that won't work against Bally Hill because it'll be thrown out the window in a second. Similar to Richie Reid, Philip Mahoney. Probably expected to drop back as well. I uh, yeah, uh, Philip plays naturally deeper. Anybody, anyway. So it's uh, it's yeah. I, I I think he'll he he he'll drop. Which you know, both teams are trying to find that space on the full forward line. That you know, if they and crowd the, the, the so it's it's the other team that it's a team that pulls out the other team best will win, and that's the that's the the, the conundrum both uh, sixes have. Like if. If you know if Philip or or Richie Reid sit on the edge of the D and and start sweeping some ball, yeah, it's great. But if Mikey Mahoney or whoever is, if it's known Cody in the centre forward role on the other side, and again we haven't even spoken about on Cody, like you know he's that, that's that's the level of quality that that Bally Hale have, and similarly with Adrian Mullen, who I think is due a big game, hasn't been playing well, a uh, really really big game player, and. You know, he he's the type of guy that could light up Croke Park because of the ability he has, and I uh, I just think uh, yeah, and that's that's uh, that that's uh, that's uh, it. It just makes it uh, even more uh, what's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned Owen Cody there, and he's been a player really. When they've been under pressure, he's come up with some excellent points. Like you you look at the Thomas's game, especially like some of the points he was getting from the sideline. Yeah, well, sure. The, the point he got under the new under the old stand in, in Turles was unbelievable. A player so close to him and getting the shot off from 50 yards over the bar. Like, he's just, look, hands, ability, and he's added a kind of a physicality and athleticism to, to, to his frame in the last year or two. I think he's a top player and uh, he's somebody that, uh, he's a go-to guy and they have so many go-to guys, but he's, you know, double young hurler of the year, like first since Owen Kelly, like, and only since Owen, like, that's, that's that, that that's unbelievable quality. When you know, I, in most club teams, he'd be the main man, where he's one of probably four or five in the in the Ballyhill forward. So, look, really top player. Look, I, I'm I'm I'd be a big fan of Brian Cody as well. I think he's a you know big six foot three athletic guy that can play 
underrated hugely, in my opinion, uh, outside of, of probably everywhere else, Bar- Ballyhale. But again, gives them gives them another option to to to, to really go at it. Uh, Paddy Mullen back in the team, I think. Uh, he he had probably some uh, publicised uh, issues over, over over the last while and wasn't in the the first team, but now is back and back for the All Ireland and again will give them a, a big physicality and hurling. I think he got four from play against uh, ben- or Bursley in the All Ireland the last time from midfield. Look, big game players, and I think Ballyhale have a lot of those guys that if the if they light up, uh, they could light up Croke Park. I get the sense you're going for a Ballyhale win this weekend. Uh, yeah, barely. Yes, I, 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 I'd go Bally Hill, and I, I just go from from history, from experience, from the weight of success these guys have had, uh, from the amount of scares they're after having, which you mentioned earlier in the conversation as well. Like you know, Thomas should have beaten them, uh, Ryan should have beaten them, uh, one or two others along the way could have beaten them. Uh, when they when they when they get to this stage of a championship with. Again, everybody doubting them with that sense of, you know, like, you know, er, er, not, not everyone not giving them a chance, but everyone saying, oh, no, no, the Bally Hale or Bally Gunner are going to win this. I, I genuinely think that tweaks something within their psyche. And uh, I, yeah, I, I'd fancy them barely, but at the same time, Bally Gunner have been building for this over again a 20 year period uh, with the quality of the individuals that they have. Uh, I, I I go for Bally Hale slightly with uh, because again Bally Gunner maybe haven't experienced this before, but again that could be all uh, that could be that could be wrong on Saturday. I don't know. Just finally, uh, just on the Bally Hale aspect, three in a row will that be mentioned at the start and you just park it then? Or yeah, I think you... so. I think it, yeah, people people are very kind of. You know, and again, you hear a lot of a lot of ma- managers and a lot of people involved in teams and and. Sorry, I cut off there. Yeah, I can hear. You. Okay, yeah. perfect. But uh, I, I think yeah, it's 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 not really mentioned. It's in the back of everyone's head. Everyone knows it's there. But at the same time, Bally Hale are the masters of pulling off the the the, the victories when people people are saying maybe there's a there's a chance of a, of an upset the other way. And I think uh, look, Bally Bally Gunner are you know top side. I, I you know it's it's it's. It's something, I suppose, that they play a, a very kind of unique brand of hurling, and uh, I think Crow Park will suit them. But I, I, I genuinely think just Ballyhale will be very difficult to beat because it's a one-off game and everyone's writing them off. Yeah, no, it's definitely going to be a fascinating club final here. One that will go right down to the wire. Uh, Willie, thanks very much for your time.